Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of being here together with your people. We pray we will not be hearers only, but we will be doers of the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Teach us yourself. Amen. Let your spirit make the word clear to everyone. Amen. Help us, Lord, to focus on your word and to understand what you are teaching us and to follow through and to experience everything you have for us. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you, consider. We're coming to John chapter 17. Tonight, we're looking at verses 13 all through to 19. John chapter 17, verse 13. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word. And the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Those are the verses we are looking at today, very deep verses, extensive verses indeed. As you come back to verse 13, it says, Now come I to thee. We remember that Jesus Christ was praying. He started the prayer at the beginning of the chapter, chapter 17. And the prayer still continued. And therefore, we're looking at this and we're titling the message tonight, Christ's supplication for our sanctification. Christ's intercession for our sanctification. Christ's prayer for our sanctification. But... But I tell you, it's supplication, Christ's supplication for our sanctification. Look at verse 13 again. He says, and now come I to thee. The Lord Jesus Christ had come into the world. But now he knew he was uh, going back to heaven. The departure of Christ from the earth was very near. He was about to go to Calvary. He bowed to die for us. He bowed to shed his blood for salvation, for redemption, for justification, and for sanctification, for everything that we need. And he knew it. He knew he was going back. He was going back home. He was going back to heaven. He was going back to God. He was going back to the Father. Look at that verse 13 again. And now come I to thee. You see the assurance there. You see the certainty there. And you see the confidence with which he said, Now I'm coming back to thee. There is something you need to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, he knew why he came. Number two, he knew what was to be done. Number three, he knew how to do what he was to do. Number four, he knew where to begin what the Lord had called him to begin. Number five, he knew who to engage along with himself. Number six, he also knew when he will finish and then go back to the Father. Pick that up one by one and think about your life. Think about yourself. That you have come to this life and you understand why you have come. Jesus Christ knew why he came. He came here and was not distracted. He was not diverted. He went on doing exactly what he was called to do. And he was looking at the goal and looking at the destiny and looking at the terminal point. There is where I'm going. And he went and he did without any distraction. Not only that, number two, he knew what he came here to do. 
and he was connected with that and he concentrated on that just what you do and now that he knew that he had finished what he ought to do he said now I come to thee in his prayer and you need to be certain like that understand like that that you know why you are here and you know what you are supposed to do number three he knew how to do it that it will please the father and he used the appropriate method he used the best method so that he would please the father in everything that he did now number four he knew where to begin and he stayed there he wasn't uh, you know here and there jumping up and going down and uh, going about and beating about the bush exactly the place he ought to begin he knew where to begin uh, and he stayed there number five he knew who to engage along with himself and he chose them so that they will do what ought to be done he knew when number six the word would have gone and out and when he would leave and would have finished the work was assigned to look at chapter 17 in john chapter 17 studying from verses 13 to 19 the topic tonight christ's supplication for our sanctification there are three things we're looking at number one our separation and preservation from the world number one our separation from the world and preservation from the world number two our sanctification and purity through the word our sanctification and purity through the word number three our service and participation in his work our service and participation in his work number one our separation and preservation from the world come to chapter 17 of John John chapter 17 I'm reading from verse 14 it says I have given them thy word It's talking to the father here is our Savior here is the Lord he knew what he had taught, he knew what he had commanded, he knew what he had given to the people, to his own disciples, and he said, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. He'll keep you from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. You see what Jesus comes to say. There are two things there. Number one, the true believer's separation. The true believer's separation. Number two, the transformed believer's preservation. The transformed believer's preservation. Number one, the true believer's separation. You can you see what he said about his own disciples in a chapter verse 14. I pray the Lord will be able to say the same thing about you. He looks at your life, he looks at your heart, he looks at your spirit, he looks at your attitude, he looks at your practice, he looks at your behavior, he follows you to your home, he follows you to the place of work, he knows you and he sees you everywhere. And now he can say this about you, verse 14, I have given him, I have given her the word of God, the word of the Father, and the world has hated him, and the world has hated her, because he is not of the world she is not of the world even as I am not of the world look at the repetition in verse 16 it's not of the world they are not of the world even as even as in the same way to the same level to the same understanding and to the same purpose that I am not of the world they are not of the world even as I am not of the world the true believers separation from the word look at chapter 15 chapter 15 of john i'm reading from verse 18 it says in chapter 15 verse 18 if the world hates you ye know that it hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would have loved its own 
but because he had not of the world. You see how sure he was, how confident he was. He was happy that these people were genuinely converted, they were genuinely born again. He was happy that the message of life and the message of salvation of eternal life has worked effectively in the hearts of these people. And he could look at them. He saw them even when they were not physically with him because he knew all things. And he could tell that they were not of the world. And he says, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Again, I pray that God will bear testimony concerning you. The Lord Jesus will bear testimony concerning you. And look at uh, chapter 29 of Proverbs. Proverbs 29, I'm reading from verse 27. Because you see, in the message of Jesus, in the declaration of Jesus, he said the world hated them. How about that? How will that happen? The world hated them. Look at chapter 29, Proverbs 29, verse 27. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. Because their lives are different. These ones are converted, but these ones are too corrupt. These ones are upright, but these ones are wayward. These ones are cleansed, but these ones are defiled. And the oil and water, they will not mix. There's a separation here. And it says, because this one is just and because that one is unjust that's why the unjust will hate the just this one is righteous and that one is unrighteous that's why the unrighteous will hate the righteous look at that verse again and measure your life with this if the thieves love you if the robbers love you if the people that are reprobates if they love you if all the people are saying hey hey yeah master you are this and that and they love you and yet they're evil then you can tell you on their side and thank God I'm not on their side look at verse 27 an unjust man is an abomination to the just and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked in fact when the Lord called the children of Israel he made that separation very clear that distinction very clear we're looking at uh, Leviticus chapter 20 Leviticus chapter 20 I'm reading from verse 23 Leviticus chapter 20 and we're looking at verse 23 if you're a real child of God God, if you are really born again, your life will be so different, your life will be so bright, and your light will so shine that the people in darkness will know you are not part of them. The people in occultism will know you are not part of them. And the people who are still drinking sin, eating sin, dressing sin, and going about in sinful ways, they will know you are not part of them because there's the true believer separation from the world. Leviticus chapter 20, I read from verse 23. Look at it, it says, and ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. I detested them, I rejected them, I threw them away, I destroyed them. Look at verse 24 there. In verse uh, 24, it tells us, but I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have, give me the word there, tell me out aloud, say it confidently separated you from other people they're not of the world even as i am not of the world you're not copying them you're not copying their style you're not copying their language you're not copying their waywardness you're not copying their evil you're not copying their devilishness you're not copying their waywardness you're not copying anything they're doing look at verse 26 and ye shall be holy unto me for I, the Lord, am holy, and I've severed you, separated you 
from other people that ye should be mine. And so you see what Jesus was saying about his own disciples, even from the Old Testament, they're not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Jeremiah chapter 10. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 10. You see the same thing going on uh, here. Jeremiah chapter 10, and I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you. Who is the Lord talking to tonight? I said, who is the Lord talking to tonight? Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you. Look at verse 2. Thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the hidden. How do the hiddens, uh, the, you know, the pagans, the unbelievers, the idol worshippers, how do they do this? How do they do this? How do they marry? How do they celebrate when they have children? How do they celebrate when they have cars? How do they celebrate when they have promotion? Learn not the way of the hidden. How do they conduct their burial ceremony? Learn not the way of the heathen. How do they do expo? How do they, you know, give bribes so they can have this? Learn not the way of the heathen. You see, if we're children of God, if we're born again, there's such a much difference, distinction between the believer and the unbeliever. That's why Jesus said, I've given them thy word. And the world has hated them because they're not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that you'll keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. It tells us in Romans uh, chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 19. In Romans chapter 3, verse 19, here is the reason we're not of the world. As the reason we're different from the world, look at this, verse 19, Romans chapter 3. Now we know that what things soever the Lord says, it says to them that are under the law that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world, and all the world, and all the world may become guilty before God. You know, if you're like the world, then you're guilty with the world. You're condemned with the world. You're defiled with the world. You're going to be punished with the world. But because it says the whole world is guilty before him. But you are not of the world. I said you are not of the world. Uh, you are not sure. You are not sure. Look at, look at uh, First John chapter 2, First John chapter 2. You see the people who are born again, there is a difference. Difference in their thought and difference in their lifestyle and difference in their action, difference in their behavior, difference in their family setup. Look at this, First John chapter 2 verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the laws of the flesh and the laws of their eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but of the world and the world passeth away. Their fashion is passing away and their fads, they are passing away. All the things they are doing, they are not stable. You find them this year, this is what they follow. You find them another time, that's what they follow. And the world passeth away and the laws thereof. But he that Doeth the will of God, tell me, abideth forever. If you want to abide forever, you are not going to be like the people of the world. You will not be doing the things that the worldly people that they are doing. It tells us in Second Peter chapter two verse twenty. Second Peter chapter two verse twenty. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, you see, there is pollution in the world. There's dirt in the world. There's defilement in the world. And all these things are abominations in the world. And when you become born again, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, and when he touches your life, and when he forgives your sins, and when he redeems you, and when he cleanses your heart, and when he converts you, you escape the pollutions of the world. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, it says through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if they are Again, entangled therein. What's the word we give for that? 
I said, what's the word for that? If somebody became born again, escaped, and is born again, and now is back again in tango, what's the word for that? Backsliding, he's gone back, he's gone back, he's gone back into the wilderness, he's gone back into his vomit, he's gone back into defilement, he's gone back into pollution, he's part of the world again, and Christ cannot testify about him anymore, Christ cannot bear witness anymore that he's not of the world, even as I'm not of the world, because he's again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse or them than the beginning. It will not happen to you. Look at verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Verse 22. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the so the swine, the pig that was washed to a wallowing in the mire. Look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 27. James chapter 1, verse 27. Pure religion. That's in pure religion. That's traditional religion. That's religion that does not save. That's religion that you know, is just nominal. Head knowledge. Go to church. Come back the same way. Go for revival, come back the same way. Go for crusade, come back the same way. But it's pure religion. I believe that's what you have. I say that's what you have. And the Lord confirmed pure religion in your life in Jesus' name. It says, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Look at this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself, tell me, unspotted from the world to keep himself unspotted undefiled unstained untainted uncontaminated from the world we're looking at james chapter 4 verse 4 james chapter 4 verse 4 the adulteress and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world the fellowship of the world Love for the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world, eating what they are eating, drinking what they are drinking, going to the same nightclub and going to their cinemas and everything, whosoever will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. I pray you will not be an enemy of God. We're coming back. We're coming back to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Uh, this point one deals with number one, our separation from the world. Number two, this point one deals with the transformed believers' preservation from the world. The transformed believers' preservation from the world. We're looking at uh, John chapter uh, 17, and we're looking at uh, verse. 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. There's evil in the world. Because there's a devil in the world. And because there's evil in the world, devil in the world, that's why the Lord is saying God will preserve you. And God will protect you from the evil in the world. Actually, when you are born again, that system of uh, deliverance and that system of uh, protection and preservation is ready within uh, that salvation. Galatians chapter 1. In Galatians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 4. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins. That's talking about Calvary. That's talking about the cross of Jesus. That's talking about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for our salvation. Who gave himself for our sins. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. I am delivered. I said I am delivered from this present evil world. Any evil in your community, you will not be part of that. It will not affect you. It will not come into your family. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God our, our Father. We're looking at Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. Galatians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory. 
save in the cross, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I am crucified unto the world. It says we have nothing in common. It's like they've crucified you on the cross. They've rejected you. They've sent you away from them. I'm saying, that's all right. I am crucified to the world, and the world is crucified unto me. The evil of the world will not touch your life. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. I think this is good for you to repeat for yourself. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Can you say that again? Do you believe that? Yes. The Lord will do it. Yes. He'll preserve you. Yes. He'll protect you. Yes. And the every evil work of any occultism, any power, thank God you are free. Yes. Let, let me read it now for you. It says, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me. Preservation for you will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever amen, amen. we're looking at first john first john chapter four first john chapter four i'm reading from verse three first john chapter four we're reading from verse three and every spirit that confesses not that jesus christ is come in the flesh is not of god this is the spirit of the antichrist the spirit in the world is a spirit opposed to christ of the antichrist it will not attach itself unto you it says whereof ye have heard that it shall come and even now already is it in the world ye of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world Greater is he. Greater is he. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Tell me, how can they conquer you? Tell me, how can they suck you up? Tell me, how can they hide you in their dirty work? You are preserved in Jesus' name. Look at verse, look at verse 5. They are the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Chapter 5, chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4. Chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Look at verse 18. You need to mark this one in your Bible. Verse 18. What did I say to you do to verse 18? Mark it in your Bible. We know. Thank God I know. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Can they touch you? No. Will they touch you? No. Can they destroy your life? No. They have come, they have come, they want to destroy me. Don't say that again. They cannot. I said they cannot. Look at that. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. And he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. Wherever they are coming from, they cannot touch you. Verse 19. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world lies in wickedness look at verse 21 little children keep yourselves from idols we're coming to point number two now point number two and we we'll come back to john chapter 17 john 
chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 17. John chapter 17, verse 17. Our sanctification and purity through the word. Our sanctification after we're saved, after we're born again, and our names are written in the book of life, there is still another experience that Christ gives, and he provided that on the cross of Calvary, and he prayed for that. Look at this, chapter 17, verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Go to verse 9. In verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. You see, the world cannot have sanctification. The world can have salvation. They have to start there. When you start school, you have to go, you have to start at level one. You have to you have the rudiments first. And so when you come into the kingdom of God, you cannot say, I want sanctification. No, you begin at salvation. So Jesus said, the prayer I'm praying, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, neither pray I for these alone. What that means is, Neither pray I for these eleven disciples, and not me alone. Judas says, God was not there. Twelve minus one is eleven. Neither pray I for these eleven disciples alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. Any believer in the house today? Praise the Lord, he prayed for you. I said he prayed for you. What's the prayer? What's the prayer? But 17, sanctify them. Through thy truth, thy word is truth. Our sanctification and purity through the word. Look at this. Number one, I divide this to various sections. Number one is prayer for our sanctification. It's prayer for our sanctification. We're looking at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. He will sanctify you holy. And I pray, and I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Can you be sanctified? Yes. Will you be sanctified? Yes. When you are sanctified, would it remain permanent? Yes. Amen. Yes. I said amen for you. Yes. It's affirmed in your life. Yes. It will be done in your life. Yes. Faithful is he who has called you. He will do it in Jesus' name. Number one, his prayer for our sanctification. Number two, the purity through sanctification. The purity through sanctification. In Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. It says, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from, how many iniquities? All iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works look up here when you have salvation you are a purchased person you are a pardoned person that's number one but now you go forward now you go from being pardoned or being purchased and you become peculiar any peculiar person here today the Lord will confirm it in your life. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. We're looking at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. For this is the will of God even your sanctification. It's the will of God, you will accomplish it in your life. That you should abstain from fornication. And that every one of you, how many of us? Only the pastor? Only the preacher? Only our mothers and the Lord? How many of us? Everyone. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in... Tell me now sanctification and honor number one his prayer for sanctification 
Number two, the purity through sanctification. Number three, the provision for our sanctification. He provided for it, the provision for our sanctification. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That's not for the world. For the world, he gave himself so they can be saved. He gave himself so that their sins can be forgiven. But you are not part of the church. You are born again. And there's a second step. There's a second experience. He said, Christ also loved the church. And he gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might uh, present it to himself. A glorious church. A glorious church. Look up here. There is a graceless church. Where they don't preach grace, they don't preach salvation, they don't preach eternal life, they don't preach about getting to heaven, just religion, just religion. And the grace of God is not there. You go in, you come out the same way you came. There's no change, there's no transformation. But first of all, there's the grace of God. And that's the gracious church gracious church and now they're gracious in their experience because they're born again they're gracious in their interaction because they're born again the way they deal with each other relate with each other they think of each other. they have love they're gracious but then after the first experience of grace there's the next experience of sanctification that makes you part of the glorious church it will happen it says that she might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, the provision for our sanctification. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2, we're reading from verse 9. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, but we see Jesus, you see him by faith. Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with his glory and honor. That he, by the grace of God, that's what I was talking about, the grace of God is for salvation, should taste death for every man. That for it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons where? unto glory. You see that? First of all, the grace of God is there and then eternal death is taken away from you and the judgment of death is taken away from you. But now there's a second step. It brings you to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren there's the provision for our sanctification number four the purpose of our sanctification everything has a purpose whatever christ does as a purpose he saved us and he said that's not enough and he wants to take us further there must be a purpose to this the purpose of our sanctification we're coming to hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 and i'm reading from verse 14 hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse 14 it says in verse 14 for by one offering, as he perfected forever, them that are sanctified. What's the purpose? He wants to perfect us. He wants to perfect you. Look at verse 14 again. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. And look at verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their where? In their hearts and in their minds will I write them. You remember that God wrote the law on the tables of stone. And people read that and then when the you know, situation comes, they can forget. And how many times, you know, we hear something, we hear something, we hear something, and then we forget. And the Lord said, you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to sanctify you. Is he talking to you? 
And then he says, the purpose is, I'll perfect you, and then that law will not be far away. I'm going to write that law inside your heart, inside your mind, so that whenever there is any challenge, and whenever there's any temptation or trial, you will remember the word because it is written inside you. The Lord will do it. Romans, Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 6, the purpose of our sanctification. Romans chapter 6, we're looking at verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That's salvation, the salvation, the old man, the old nature is crucified. But it goes on that the body of sin, the totality of sin, the root of sin, the one that generates sin, it says that the nature of sin might be, what's the word there? Destroyed, that's sanctification. When it's crucified, it's not dead yet, but crucified, that's salvation. But now it says that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth you should not serve sin. Number five, the price of our sanctification. The price. What price did he pay? What's the price for that sanctification? Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, he paid a price. It's like if somebody paid a price for you to collect now because everything has been paid for. And then you go there and then he asks you, have you gone to collect that thing I paid for? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have time. But that thing is so precious, and I brought all my income, all my, everything I've got, and I paid for that thing on your behalf. The Lord shed his blood, and he paid the price for your sanctification. And you will not say, I didn't have time to go and uh, have that thing, uh, you are going to have it. Uh, look at uh, chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Hebrews 13, verse 12, wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with what? With his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, do something about that. Consecrate your life. Give yourself and then abandon yourself to the Lord. He says, let us go forth, therefore, without the camp, bearing is reproach for here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come he paid the price look at verse 20 verse 20 of that same chapter 13 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant you see the price there the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen, amen. Number six, the preparation for our sanctification. What do I do? How do I prepare? We know that when somebody needs to get saved, there's a preparation. He hears the word of God. There's conviction of the word of God. And then he repents. And when he repents, he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ and salvation comes. I about sanctification. What do we do? Our preparation for sanctification. We're coming to Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20, I'm reading from verses 7 and 8. Leviticus chapter 20, and we're reading from verses 7 and 8. It tells us here, verses 7 and 8, it says, Sanctify yourselves, therefore. It says, yes, I'm the one to sanctify you, but you'll sanctify yourself. you set yourself apart. Any defilement, anything that you know, this is not right, this is not right, this is not right. As I'm born again, I need to live the privileged life of being born again. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Look at verse 8. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. That's true. Whatever he has told you already, and whatever you know already as child of God, how to do this, how to do that. I need to correct that thing. I need to make that thing right. That's not a right. I need to change that. You can do, you do all that in preparation. Then he says, I am the Lord which sanctify you. I am the Lord which sanctify you. You make the proper preparation and then sanctification will come. Look at Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah chapter 6, 
I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6, we're reading from verse 1. It says, In the year that King, King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon his throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, and with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy, 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 our God is holy. Our God is pure. Our God is righteous. It says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door uh, moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I. When you saw the glory of God, when you saw the holiness of God, when you saw the brightness of those angels, and he compared all that with himself, he knew that he had been a prophet. And you see in chapter 1, he had been preaching salvation. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. He's been preaching salvation. He preached salvation in chapter 2, and even in chapter 3, and chapter 4, and chapter 5. And now he looks at himself, although he was saved, but he said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, and which he had taken with the tongue from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth. Something will happen today. The fire that burns every impurity will be taken away. The fire, the flame that takes away every defilement, inner defilement, everything will go away in Jesus' name. There is sanctification. There's a second work of grace that the Lord does in the heart. It says, He laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged, purged. That's the purification. That is the sanctification. You prepare for it. You see, he demanded for it. He prayed for it. He confessed that he needed something more. And that thing that was more, the Lord did it. He'll do it for you. We're coming to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, I read from verse 1. The preparation that we need to make for our sanctification. Look at this. It says, and having not therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God that's what we need to do and as we do it the Lord himself will sanctify us in Jesus name number one is there is prayer for our sanctification Number two, the purity through sanctification. Number three, the provision for our sanctification. Number four, the purpose of our sanctification. Number five, the price of our sanctification. Number six, the preparation for sanctification. Number seven, our preservation in sanctification. So that we get it, we will not lose it. You have it, you will not lose it. You take it to the office. You bring it back home. You take it to your farm. You bring it back home. That's an question. You take it to the boss. You not drop it in the boss. You bring it back home. And when you are coming to church, what do you come with? Sanctification. And you preserve it in the church. And when you are going back home, you take it along with you. Preservation will remain preserved. The sanctification in Jesus' name. The preservation in sanctification. We're coming to Jude, reading from verse 21. Jude, reading from verse 21. It tells us in verse 21 of Jude, only one chapter, it says, Keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keep yourself. Keep yourself. Anything that will stain uh, your white garment, you are not going to allow that sin. Anything that will come to your life and take the sanctification away from your heart, from your spirit, from your temper, from your attitude, from your interaction, and from your devotion to the Lord, you will not allow it in Jesus. Jesus' name. 
keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life look at verse 24 now unto him that's able to keep you from falling you keep yourself and the Lord is also going to keep you unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior the glory and majesty dominion and power but now and ever amen, amen. We're coming to First Peter chapter First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one. I'm reading from verse three. First Peter chapter one, verse three. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible. And undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you Amen. who are kept look at this who are kept who are kept by the power of god through faith unto salvation that's final salvation ready to be revealed in the last time the lord will keep you First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 24. First John chapter 2 verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you. Everything you are learning, let that therefore abide in you. Everything you have experienced, let that therefore abide in you. Which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. I will continue. You will continue in Jesus' name. Nothing will take your place away from you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. And this great sanctification that Jesus Christ prayed for, it will be yours in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now, our service and participation in his work. Our service and participation in his work. We're coming to John chapter 17. John chapter 17 verse 18 John chapter 17 verse 18 as thou hast sent me into the world even so have I also sent them into the world look at what Jesus is saying now he's transferring the ministry to you he's transferring the service to you and he says as the father had sent him into the world that the first part of that verse the second part of that verse so even so have I also sent them into the world look at the first part as thou hast sent me into the world as thou hast sent me into the world look at John chapter 20 verse 21 John chapter 20 verse 21 it says in verse 21 then said Jesus to them again peace be unto you as my father have sent me even so send I you as my father have sent me even so send I you the father sent him what did the father send him to do look at John chapter 4 John chapter 4 we're looking at verse 34 John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus said unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work he gave him a work to do he gave him the work to do and he said my father sent me and he sent me to do a particular work and i'm doing it and until i finish i will not stop and he's saying that the same way the father sent me into the world to get something done the same way i'm sending into the world to get that same thing done what is it the work that the father gave him to do luke chapter 5 verse 32 luke chapter 5 verse 32 the work he gave him to do and then you understand the meaning of what he said as my father has sent me into the world Luke chapter 5 verse 32 I came not to call the righteous but the sinners to repentance that's the work that's the work I came to call sinners 
to repentance. And he says, the same work the Father gave me to do, calling sinners to repentance, that's the same work I am giving you to do. Luke chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 10. Luke chapter 19, reading from verse 10. Look at verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost, that's the work, that's the work. The Father gave him that work to do, to seek the lost and to save the lost. We're coming to First Timothy chapter 1, First Timothy chapter 1, we're reading from verse 15. The Father sent me into the world. What did he send him to do? Look at First Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to do what? To save sinners. That's the work. That's the work to save us sinners. That means reaching out to the sinner, preaching the word of God to them, calling them to repentance, and showing them how they will have the salvation of the Lord. Why? Because in Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. It says, The Lord is not slack. Concerning his promise, as some men come slackness, but his long suffering towards word, not willing that any should perish. That's why the Father sent the Son into the world, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come to repentance. That's the work he came to do. And everyone he spoke to, he wanted them to come to repentance. He said, that's the work he gave me to do. And the work the Father has given me to do, I will finish. And he has given you the work now. I said he has given you the work now. First John chapter 4 verse 9. First John chapter 4 verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Listen to this. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. That they might have eternal life through him. John chapter 3. In John chapter 3, reading from verse 16. John chapter 3, reading from verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Look at verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's the work. That's the work. And come back now to John chapter 17. You understand when he said in verse 18, As thou hast sent me into the world to call sinners in the world to repentance, to bring salvation to the sinners in the world, it says, look at the second part of that verse 18, even so. Even so, for the same purpose, even so, for the same work, even so, to realize the same thing, even though to seek and to save that which was lost, even so, have I also sent them into the world. Even so, have I also sent them into the world. You see what the Lord has done? He said, I'm leaving, I'm going back to heaven, and now I leave the work with you. And the same passion I have, the same passion you ought to have, the same compassion that Jesus had, the same compassion you ought to have, the same zeal that Jesus had, the same zeal you ought to have, and the same devotion, consecration that Jesus had in reaching after those sinners, in same my meat is to do the will of him to, uh, that sent me and to finish his work. That's the same zeal, the same passion, the same courage, the same commitment, and the same consecration you ought to have. And look at that John again, chapter 20, verse 21. John chapter 20, verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. As my Father have sent me, even so send I you. Come to Matthew chapter 
28 matthew chapter 28 is giving us the same work the same work of redemption and the same work of going to the sinners and telling them about the jesus who died about the jesus who became the savior about the jesus they need to call so that they will have the salvation of the lord matthew chapter 28 verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach, how many people? All nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And the church said, Mark chapter 16, the work he has given us to do, as my father has sent me, even so send I you. Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world. Go ye into all the world. Don't stay in a, you know, a little corner somewhere. Don't stay in a little local government somewhere. Don't stay in a little backyard somewhere, community somewhere. Go ye into all the world and touch every life. And tell everyone that Jesus Christ died and he paid the price for their redemption, for their salvation. Go ye into all the world. Make the move. Take the initiative. Come out of your house and come out of your comfort zone. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel the good news of salvation to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved he that believeth not shall be damned i pray the people that listen to you they will hear the gospel they'll believe the good news they will repent of their sins and they will turn to the lord and be born again in jesus name we're looking at luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 45 luke chapter 24 verse 45 then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and then he says and he said unto them thus it is written and thus it behoved christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sin repentance and removal of sin repentance and the salvation the cleansing from sin the forgiveness from sin that as we talk to the people it's not just to preach we will not leave them in their sin we will not leave them in their defilement we will not leave them in their condemnation but as the lord himself has told people when he was here on earth and he brought them to repentance and he brought them to regeneration and he brought them to salvation and he brought them to conversion even so we're going to do in jesus name and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among how many people all nations beginning at Jerusalem. That's what he has commanded, and that's what we are going to do. Are you going to do it? John chapter 1, verse 29. John chapter 1, verse 29. You want to tell the people because they don't know that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God and He sacrificed already and He has given His life already for the salvation of the whole world. It says in John chapter 1, verse 29, it says, The next day John said, Jesus coming unto him. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. He pointed out Christ. He pointed out the Savior. He pointed out the Redeemer. You will do the same thing. Everybody that comes your way, everybody that you even go to, if they don't come to you, you tell them, Behold the Lamb of God. We take the sin of the world away. And as they believe, the Lord will save them. The Lord will change their lives. That's the reason he has saved you, so that you can become a source of salvation to other people. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 26. Unto you first, God, having restored Jesus, his son, sent him. 
That's why Jesus was sent, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. He said, as my father has sent me, what did he send him to do? He sent him to turn people away from their iniquity. And he says, as my father has sent me, even so have I sent you. What are you to do? Then you turn people away from their iniquity, from their sin, and you turn them to the Savior, and they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they will have salvation. They'll have eternal life. And as they're going to heaven, they'll follow you to heaven in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 16. Acts, chapter 26, verse 16. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Have you heard the word of the Lord today? Has the Lord appeared to you? Do you sense the presence of God with you there? Have you got something you didn't get had before? Do you have the gospel? I said, do you have the gospel? Do you have the revelation of his will? And then you can say, I met the Lord. I saw the Lord. I heard from the Lord. I received the word of the Lord. He says, for this purpose have I appeared unto thee, to make thee a minister, somebody there a minister and a witness, somebody there, a witness. Both of these things which thou art seen, and of the things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people. He will deliver you. He will protect you. And as you go preaching the word, and as you go doing the work of God, this word will reach out to many people through you in Jesus' name. And it says, from the Gentiles unto whom I now tell me, I now tell me out aloud, and I'll send thee, is sending you to the people, send you to community, and send you to the sinners, call them to repentance, call them to salvation, call them to regeneration. And as he sent you, you are going to be faithful, and many people are going to come to the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness unto light. As you go to them, you'll open their eyes to see. They'll see that Jesus is Savior. They'll see that Jesus is Lord. They will see that they are to turn from their sin, turn to the Savior, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There'll be genuine salvation. There'll be real salvation, a real transformation of their lives. It says to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Amen? Yeah. That they may receive, what are they going to receive? forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me it will happen in jesus name you see the early church had the same thing you are hearing now what did they do they did what the lord wanted them to do because jesus said as the father has sent me even so send i you come to chapter 8 of acts of the apostles acts of the apostles chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 4. acts chapter 8 verse 4 and, and it says and uh, therefore they that was scattered abroad went everywhere what are they doing they went to the communities preaching the word and they went to all the streets preaching the word and they know that every door preaching the word you know it's wonderful to come together to the bible study but then as we finish the bible study that was scattered everywhere they went out everywhere and they were preaching the word this community will hear the word this local government will hear the word all this area will hear the word. And all the people who are hearing today, your communities, your region, and your state, every locality, every village, every city, every town, they will hear the word of God in Jesus' name. You see, we're not to hide ourselves inside the sanctuary, inside the temple, inside the church building. We're to go out and tell the people where they are. Look at chapter 8, chapter 8 of Acts. I'm reading here from verse 26. Acts chapter 8, and we're reading from from verse 26 and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying arise and go toward the south unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza which is a desert and he arose immediately he didn't waste time he didn't say well I still have this to do I still have that to do and he arose and he went you will arise and you will go 
I said you arise and you'll go and you take the gospel with you, you take the good news with you and you take the message of life eternal with you and people are going to hear they're going to repent in Jesus name and he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under Candace Coina of the Ethiopians who had the charge of all our treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship and was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet and then the spirit said unto Philip go near that's what the spirit is telling you as you see the sinners as you see the unbelievers as you see the people that have not got the gospel go near and join thyself to this chariot and Philip brand silver to him and had him read the prophet Isaiah and said understandest thou what thou readest and he said how can I except some man should guide me and he desired Philip that he would come to him and sit with him look at verse 35 then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him and preached unto him you will preach Jesus the man was born again they will be born again look at chapter 11 Acts chapter 11 I'm reading from verse 19 Acts chapter 11 verse 19 now they which was scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch preaching the word to none but to the Jews only and then it says in verse 21 and the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number believed and turned to the Lord will you do it I said will you do it and this work will prosper in your hand Let's come back to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. You're ready to carry the gospel. Ready to take the gospel. And then tonight, you are going to rise up. You are going to pray that the Lord will empower you. The Lord will energize you. Everything we have heard, the Lord will translate everything to your personal experience. Tonight, we have heard that Jesus knew why he was here. Do you know why you are in the world? Jesus knew what he was to do in the world. Do you know what you are to do in the world? Jesus knew how to do it. And he followed the best methods. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I got something today. That thing you have got today, take it back to the Lord and say Lord I will Lord I will Lord I will I will follow your word I'll follow your truth I'll follow the teaching I'm going to make it practical in my life I tell the Lord Jesus Christ was a person of purpose be a man of purpose be a woman of purpose that you tell the Lord oh Lord here I am today I'm going to serve you here I am today I'm going to follow after the word I have heard so that your joy will be full and the people you are ministering to you want their joy to be full the people you are touching their lives and you're telling them here is the way walking therein and you're revealing the savior to them you want their joy to be full if they don't get saved their joy is not going to be full they're going to have salvation they're going to have redemption they're going to have forgiveness tell them tell them so that their joy will be full and you yourself you will have your joy full when you're serving the Lord with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind and when you are transparent in your service to the Lord and you are committed in your service unto the Lord tell the Lord I want that same joy Jesus Christ was looking at that goal and he was looking at the joy that was set before him and because of that he endured the cross you'll endure whatever challenge you'll endure whatever difficulty you'll endure whatever persecution you'll endure whatever misunderstanding you will endure whatever whatever challenge it is so that you focus on the joy that is set before you just like the Lord Jesus Christ let the light of Christ shine through you let the word of God come forth through you let the experience of salvation be real in your personal life and make sure that by the grace of God in the strength of the Lord by the teaching of the word of God and by the influence and the power of the Holy Ghost in your life make sure that that separation from the world is ready 
accomplished that you are not of the world even as Christ is not of the world not of the world not of the world you are not part of their pollution you are not part of their defilement you are not part of uh, their evil you are not part of their darkness you are not part of their waywardness you are not part of their fraud you are not part of the things of the world they are not of the world even as i am not of the world brother let the lord be able to testify concerning you sister let the lord be able to testify concerning you he's not of the world she's not of the world she's born again she's a child of god his life is clean her life is clean everything about him about her i see her i see through her heart i see through her life i see through her behavior is not of the world as i'm not of the world she is not of the world as i am not of the world you tell the lord if you're really born again if anyone be in christ a new creature old things have passed away and behold all things have become new all things become new not part of the world true believers separated from the world true believers distinct from the world remember the words of jesus love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for the things that are in the world the pride of life the loss of the flesh the loss of the eyes they're not of the father they're of the world and the world passeth away only he, only she that does the will of God abideth forever. Don't go back to your vomit. Don't go back to the defilement of the world. Don't be entangled again or the pollutions of the world. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and I will receive you. Make up your mind now. Make up your mind. Take a decision and say, Lord, I'm going to serve you in righteousness and holiness. All the things of the world I abandon. All the things of the world I throw away. I'm going to live clean and live right and live pure and live bright for the Lord. I will be different. As light is different from the darkness of the world, I'm going to be different from the world. As salt is different from pepper, I'm going to be different. Different from the world. Be not part of the world. Be transformed and let that life be preserved. The life that is different from that of the world. Real preservation. Preservation. Preservation in the things of the Lord. It says, he that is born of God does not commit sin. And he that is born of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. That wicked one toucheth him not. Let your salvation be clear and definite. Clear and definite. That anywhere you are, in the church, at home, on the street, in the bus, in the taxi, in the place of work, that distinction, that clarity of salvation will be so clear to everyone. And after salvation, there's sanctification sanctification and jesus prayed for your sanctification sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth he prayed for sanctification and i pray god that god himself will sanctify you spirit soul and body that he'll preserve you blameless unto the coming of the lord what a great experience you have purity through that sanctification tell him to purify your heart Purify your soul, purify your spirit, purify your tongue, purify your mind, purify your memory, purify every part of you, internal purity. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in a holy place? They that have clean hands, salvation, and a pure heart, sanctification. It's made provision for that. Jesus has made provision for your sanctification. And so you tell the Lord, I know you made provision for that. He gave his blood, he shed his blood, so he will cleanse you, so he'll purge you, so he'll purify you. He's still praying for you, interceding for you. It will be done. He sanctifies, he purifies. The purpose is that the body of sin will be destroyed. The purpose of that sanctification is that you'll be pure within and without holy through and through holy in the secret holy in the public transparently holy continually holy purified 
Tell the Lord, He will do it. The price is paid already. The blood of Jesus. Jesus Himself. That He might sanctify the people. Shed His blood and suffered without the gate, outside the gate. Let's follow after. Consecrate yourself. Lay everything on the altar. Abandon everything that he does. Your total submission to the Lord. Prepare yourself. Cleanse yourself. Abstain from every appearance of evil. And say, Lord, here am I. I'm available. Sanctify me. Purify me. He will. He will. And then after that sanctification, preservation is sanctification. That he preserves you. Preserves you. That you are not getting it and losing it. Picking it up and dropping it. That every way you find yourself, that the grace of God will cover your life. And you will be preserved in sanctification. At home, sanctification. At work, sanctification. In school, sanctification. On the street, sanctification. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And he saves us for a purpose. He sanctifies us for a purpose. His service. Participation in his work. As thou hast sent me into the world. He was saying to bring sinners into the kingdom. He was saying to bring repentance unto people. And the people that repented, they were saved. Their lives were turned around. And that redemption was visible to be seen. The same thing with the people the Lord is sending you to. As my father has sent me into the world, even so send I you into the world that you'll seek to save the people that are lost. Commit your time. Commit your strength. Commit your energy. Commit everything you've got into the salvation of souls, reach out. You've got salvation? Tell other people. You've got this truth? Tell other people. And let people know you belong to the Lord. Let people know that you enjoy the service of the Lord and you're inviting them to also come and serve the Lord. Called to salvation. was saved. Called to sanctification, was sanctified. Called to service, will serve the Lord. Do His work and keep on doing it until you finish well. Keep on doing the work until you finish well. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, and revived people said, and those who are going to serve the Lord, those who are going to follow the Lord, those who are going to do the will of God, those who are going to serve as Christ has served, and those who accept the challenge as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And those people said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our study tonight. What sacred moment we have with you in your presence. And you have revealed your mind unto us. We pray, Lord, this will not be in vain upon anyone here tonight. In Jesus' name. Lord, we're praying your joy will come to every heart. Come to every family. And Lord, as we go out, depression will vanish away. Sadness will vanish away. Gladness and joy and rejoicing will come in every heart in Jesus' name. Anything that will bring sorrow, 
any seed that will bring heartache, any seed that will bring pain, any seed that will be in depression. Oh Lord, I pray, wipe every sinner from your people in Jesus' name. Joy in every heart, joy in every home, joy in their business, joy in their family, joy everywhere in Jesus' name. And the joy will never end. Fulfill their joy. Increase their joy. And I pray, Lord, that as you have said, we're not of the world, even as Christ is not of the world. Any sin of the world that tries to attach itself unto us, oh Lord, we pray, wash them away in Jesus' name. The character of the world, the attitude of the world, the drinking of the world, the smoking of the world, the occultism of the world, and the worldliness and the games of the world, everything you take away from everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, help us to be a good representation, representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you will be a little Christ there, a little Christ there. And as we are walking, as we are moving, people will say, you had been with Jesus. She had been with Jesus. And Lord, we pray the very character of Christ and the very nature of Christ and the attitude of Christ and the holiness, righteousness of Christ will be upon everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, there will be no graceless person here. The grace of God, the gift of God, the power of God, the anointing of the Spirit, the enveloping of the Spirit will be upon everyone in Jesus' name. And they sanctification, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Lord, I pray this great work will be done in every heart in Jesus' name. For the brother there, for the sister there, for the father in the Lord, mother in the Lord, everyone there. Do it for every one of us in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, the people will see that purity is in our life. Sanctification in our lives. Holiness in our lives. And it will be holiness that is visible and, and very known, well known to all people around us in Jesus' name. In our heart, holiness. In our spirit, holiness. In our temper, holiness. In our emotion, holiness. In our character, holiness. In our interaction, holiness. In our relationship, holiness. Morning, afternoon, and evening, holiness unto the Lord in Jesus' name. And Lord, you've given us a work to do. We're going to do it. You have said, as the Father sent me, even so have I sent you. Lord, we accept that work. We'll do it with passion and compassion. And as we reach out and touch other people's lives, I pray that the people will touch, they'll never be the same again. Give them real salvation, real regeneration, and a turning around transformation in their lives in Jesus' name. We will have testimony. The work will prosper in our hand. Lord, bless everyone. Enrich everyone's life. And every other blessing we need, you know that we need before your people go. Impart upon everyone one by one in Jesus' name. Strengthen the weak. Encourage those who are discouraged. And I pray that all the problems they brought here today, they drop everything behind. And they move forward in the strength of the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless your family. The Lord bless your going out. The Lord bless your coming in. And the Lord increase and fulfill his joy in your life. You'll go from strength to strength, from faith to faith, from power to power. And what the Lord has done will be permanent in your life in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.